Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jake Smash. This is going to be a Watcher of Realms video. It is 12.09, Saturday, February the 17th, and we're going to finish Void Rift. I wanted to do this so much earlier in the week. I'm sorry if you've been waiting for this video. This week has just been crazy. I put out a step-by-step -step walkthrough on Phase 1 for the Shadowkeeper earlier in the week. I'll link to that in the pinned comments. If you're struggling with other weeks, right, I've done Aracha, I've done Crimson Star, I've done Torador. I'm going to finish this week. I'm just sorry it's taken longer than I planned on, but this isn't going to be like a minimum requirements walkthrough if you haven't seen any of the others, if this is the first one you're watching. This isn't minimum gear, minimum champs, that sort of thing. This is where I go back through the stages for the first time since I cleared them uh, months ago and kind of relearn very briefly. It's usually on the first run, right? Um, explain the concepts and why you use different champs and where you should place different types you know put a defender here put a healer here use a marksman here oh this person's weak to magic damage that sort of thing um to help you use your account and your heroes more effectively to clear this content so let's get right into it let's go to the first the first stage we're in phase two of the i don't know this is the tentacle boss i don't know his name we'll figure it out at the end so kind of a general rule of thumb here, for most stages, uh, two, two defenders, two healers, and then four DPS that can kind of mix and match depending on what the content is, kind of four flex spots. I like to use often two ranged fighters behind my defenders, as well as to a co two flex spots, right? Marksmen or mages, whatever the case is for the content. But um, if that's not going to work, don't worry. I'll walk you through it. This is the, the team that was there. This is what we'll use. And again, you don't need this team. The concept is where the monsters come from and how you can best stop that. So for this one, we have three. We've got three ways that they can get to our soul core. We're going to start uh, top top right here because that's where the first skeleton is coming from we need to block that he's not going to do much damage to my regulus so i'm going to start by putting a ranged fighter behind him to start doing damage before i get uh, a healer on the board i don't remember where the monsters come from next so i'm going to hold off here i'm going to wait i'm going to see if i need to block the bottom or if i need to block the top We'll pick it up just a little bit though. There we go, they're going to the bottom. So I'm gonna place my other tank down here and place my marksman in range. You could do a marksman or a mage here, either way. Put them in range so that they can attack these skeletons before they multiply. However you do that, you know, plenty of different ways, plenty of different champs. And you could have placed them way earlier, right? I just couldn't remember where the monsters came from. For the next one, I don't have a third defender. If you need, if you don't have a lot of heals, did I, did I do Elowen? Oh, I did, I placed Elowen incorrectly. That's okay. I should be able to take this guy out with Zillatu's ult. But if you don't have... Uh, a tanky fighter that can go there, or if you don't have good enough heals to defend, right, then maybe uh, a third defender. Oh my gosh, I did not mean to pull her. I'm talking and clicking the wrong buttons. That's fine. Yeah, she completely died. That's okay. Zilla 2. Zilla 2 got it done, right? So let's get Setrum down on the board. see if we can get some extra damage here and I'm I'm winging this right because I have uh, really strong champs and really strong gear here the way that you would have done that optimally without people dying all over the place right is having a third defender north of Regulus and having your healer here that can actually be in range to heal both of them that's how you would do it all right <laughs> let's pick it up we've got another set of skeletons down here so whoever we place down here our marksman or our mage we want them to take care of this round also and this would be the setup
this would be the setup. We would have one defender just in case someone snuck past here. But if your marksman or your mage is strong enough, right, to kill them before they ever start coming, you don't need your defender. I could put my broke here, my second defender up here where Aracha is, and then you only need two instead of three. So that's the question for you. If you can maybe only reach the first set of skeletons or maybe only kill the first set and some do come, right, then then put a tank down there. Yeah. So that's how that's how it would be done. See, even with my extra gear, I couldn't handle that last bit. But this will be easy to do correctly this time. I'll walk you through it just a little bit. We put Regulus on the board. You could either do your healer or your ranged fighter, whoever you're doing. Next on the board, right, would be our DPS down here, assuming that we can, you know, with a marksman or a mage to take care of these skeletons when they ult. Let's get our second defender. We don't need any heals really fast, really quick there because they only start out with that one skeleton. Then we get our heals on the board. Elwin will work to cover these two, right? Pretty much everyone will cover these two, these two, this, these two lanes, excuse me, sorry. Anyone will cover those if your your marksman or your mage can take care of these skeletons before they actually get past. If they won't, right, then use a third one here. Really, really simple setup. So once you have two defenders up top, it's not an issue. Ideally, if you can kill one, you know, do as much damage as possible before they start to multiply, because then when they multiply, their copies will have the the lesser amount of, of health. They'll just multiply with the same amount of health that they had when it procced. There we go. So I didn't use Twin Fiend, right? Um, so for you, if your Marksman or Mage down here can't handle the Skeletons before they all get past, that's where your third Defender would come into play. You can have a third Defender down here, and what you would do is you would just move your your Marksman or your Mage, right? They would just come, if, if you can't put a Defender right here, I'm not sure. If the Defender has to go here, then you would just bring your Marksman or your Mage back to this spot. That way they could attack while... Um, the defender has stopped them. There we go. So, easiest way, three defenders, two marksman mage type DPSs, one healer, two ranged fighters. You can make it even easier, right, if your defender down on the bottom lane if they're dying get a second healer down there take away one of the ranged fighters but keep your marksman or your mage since they tend to do more damage next stage all right so Monsters are going to start from start with the top lane. So let's get a tank up there. Let's get a ranged fighter that can start doing damage. And now these, uh, you know, Last of Us types. 
they can actually do some damage. So I want to place my healer down next so that they don't die. It really wouldn't matter here because Brokir has an unyielding effect. So if you have a tank that has an unyielding effect, that'll make it easier. But you still don't want to waste that if you don't need to. Monsters are going to start coming from to, for the bottom one. And there's only two ways they can get to your soul core here. So two defenders will be enough. I'm going to place my defender here. They're outside of Elowen's range. But I've got my marksman inside of the range. And for Elowen, right, I can use her little wood elf if I need to. But I shouldn't need to. Let's... Get Setrum down. These tentacles can be a real pain. They prevent that character from doing anything. So you want a way, you want to set up your, you want to position your champs in a way that they kind of cover each other. So no matter who gets um, attacked by those tentacles, your heroes can kill them. So Setrum right now, right? I can't hit this one, but Zillatu's ult should be able to. It must not be targetable. So these ones are targetable for this one. And, and these big tentacles, they attack, they die over time. Sometimes they're targetable, sometimes they're not. Depends on the week. There we go. And I'm intentionally not using these two to show you that there's, there's wiggle room, there's flex here, depending on what you need, right? If you need a second healer to cover both lanes because your DPS isn't quite strong enough to take them out before your tank dies, or maybe you need extra DPS up here to help if your ranged fighter isn't strong enough, Whatever the case may be, maybe you want to place a ranged fighter behind your tank to do extra damage uh, to help your marksman or your mage here. You have you have wiggle room, but the big stuff that you need to do, right? Tank both lanes, so you want two defenders, either one or two healers, depending on how fast you can kill stuff, how strong your DPS is. You want to ensure coverage Make sure that your characters can essentially attack your own characters in case they get hit by those tentacles. And then you've got some wiggle room for extra DPS, um, whether you need it on the top lane or the bottom lane. These are the easiest matches. You just want... Uh, essentially AOE mages and AOE fighters, right? How many fighters you need will depend on, you know, how much damage you can pump out at a time. Whether you throw, you know, one, two, three of them down, whatever the case may be. But essentially this is this is where your AOE mages AOE mages shine. So throw them all on the board and then just monitor your ults. I don't need all of these, but you know, it's whatever. Just monitor your ults and use them when you need them. And if you're progressing through Void Rift, right? Regardless of the difficulty, if you're progressing through the stages, the normal stages are way harder than than these. These are essentially your your gold raid, right? So I wouldn't worry about this. Just use AoE mages, a couple AoE fighters. Easiest stuff in Void Rift.
There we go. Easy stuff's done. Now I think we have what two more two more matches in this phase. I think we've got the mini boss and the actual boss. We've got Nightmare Council. So if you notice, right, you get a faction bonus. If you're struggling to clear the content, that's another way that you can make it easier, right? If you consider, you know, whether you need defenders or fighters or whatever, if you're struggling to clear it and you have folks that are in that in that um, faction, right? Then maybe use them for the extra stat boosts. Thirty percent makes a big difference if you need it. All right. So for this one, folks are coming from the middle, so I'm going to block it, just like last time. Now here is where the next guy is coming up top. So you're going to want to block that one also here pretty quick. Okay. So you don't have a lot of cost. You can do it one of two ways. You can either place your healer down first that'll cover both of them or a tank down that'll cover the second one. Um, and that'll kind of depend on who your first tank is, how strong they are, how tanky they are, if they have an unyielding effect, if they don't. Right. But you need to get both of them on the board. Since both of these have an unyielding effect, I'm gonna put both of them on the board and not really worry about Broke here, right? Because he can essentially die once with that unyielding effect and then get my heal down. Once I get my heals down, then I get a DPS on the board. You would probably wanna put someone stronger than Zilla to, but now that I've got heals on my tanks, I'm not worried about it, it's just a matter of time. Zilla too strong, don't get me wrong, but someone that could take these two out faster by themselves. Now we got folks coming from the bottom, same thing, you're going to put a marksman or a mage, these skeletons, you don't want them to multiply. They go from one to two to four and they can overrun you very quickly. So place a marksman or a mage there that can nuke them down so you don't have to worry about it. And from here, right, this is the basic setup. So you place folks as you need to. You can do this one of two ways. You can place a healer here. You can get a second healer on the board for your marksman or your mage, whatever the case may be. You can place extra DPS up here for to defend your tanks. If you're, if you're the first DPS that you put down, if they're not strong enough, right, to kill everything, then get a second DPS up here that can cover both lanes. Silas just died, so um, for the next round of skeletons, oh, Cetrum died, wow. Okay, I forgot how strong those things hit. Let's let him hit again and hit one more time and die. And then get someone on the board for those skeletons. <laughs> he popped up in the same place. So these these tentacles, where they pop up is random. It changes every time you play through it. And the effects, right, whether you can or can't target them, that changes too. So a uh, little bit of unfortunate RNG there, right? He's going to go down, but that's okay. He's going to tie die. We don't have more skeletons coming out until now. So I want... I'm going to place Silas and Cetrum since I had to place them late. Get two DPS down there so that I don't need to worry about these skeletons as they multiply. You could place a ranged fighter behind your second tank if you want to. Pay attention if this tentacle up here is killing your folks, make sure they stay healed. And that is pretty much the round. The only thing that you really need to adapt for in this one is where these tentacles pop up, where they come up here, down here. I think they can come up down, down here at the very bottom middle also. So where they pop up, you may need to adjust where you have an extra healer or where you have an extra DPS. But the basic premise is two DPS up top or two defenders up top, excuse me, 
able to heal both of them, whether you need one uh, healer or two healers, what it, it doesn't matter, right? So two tanks, the ability to heal both of them, and one or two DPS, depending on how strong your DPS are, in order to cover both of those lanes. And then you have one or two DPS down bottom to cover the skeletons. Here's the boss. Ludwig, that's his name. Ludwig the Hierophant. So, life leeching to immobilize the target, elim eliminate the tentacles. So this is what we're talking about. We'll summon tentacles in a random area. That's what we were talking about. Unleashes his tentacles immobilizing. So you can, continuous damage, you can kill those while they're on your folks. Causing them to undergo a split. That's the skeletons, right? So that's all the stuff that we kind of learned all the way up to this point, that some stuff is random, some stuff is not. This one's a little bit tougher, but really it's not that bad. You still have a little bit of RNG to adjust with depending on where the tentacles go and who they attack and all that stuff. But the same kind of concepts apply. We've got two ways to get to the soul crystal. So we need to get a defender down and then let's get some DPS. to take care of that guy. Place heals down that can cover both lanes, okay? Top lane and bottom lane, it doesn't have to be Elowen. Almost all healers can, can cover both of this, whether they're over here facing to the left or you know here facing to the right or back and forth. There's so many healers that can cover both lanes here. Just cover both lanes because you're also gonna need a defender down bottom. And this is where I like to use, um, a, I like to use a marksman with a Lord. I've got Silas and, and Aracha because that will allow me to cover here in front of the, the defender. And it will also allow me to cover with a Lord, whether it's Lunaria or Aracha, either one. It'll allow you to cover right here where these, the skeleton stops. Okay, so the tentacle got Silas. So that's where, remember we were talking earlier, let's slow it down a little bit. The tentacle grabbed Silas and he couldn't attack. He couldn't do anything. So I had to place Setrum here to cover everyone in case they got attacked. Silas is gonna take out the skeletons in the first one here. And these ones back here are gonna multiply. So since they're gonna multiply, they're gonna end up being four skeletons. So you will need DPS um, any combination of DPS here that you need, right? Have your one defender that can get healed. And then whether it's an AOE mage or a really strong marksman or, you know, two, whatever the case may be, make sure it can get covered. So for me, right, I've got a marksman that can cover right here in front of the defender. I've got my primary marksman that can cover the first set and I've got a ranged fighter back here. They can all do damage on these mobs. And if you, on your defender, if you place uh, a, a bastion ring, I forget what it's called. The artifact that gives them an additional block, right? Even if all four get to your defender, uh, it doesn't matter because they'll stop them and uh, none of them will get past. And then you just ult as necessary with any of your DPS there that are covering any of the lanes and you've got it. So for this one, same kind of concept applies, right? Make sure that your heroes, your champs are effectively covering each other so that if they get grabbed by that tentacle, right, then they don't die and they are not are unable to do their attacks, right? Make sure that you have heals covering both lanes to your soul crystal. Make sure you have a defender at each soul crystal. So, and then make sure you have a marksman or a mage that can reach the first set of skeletons here that start multiplying. And then you've got some wiggle room with the other ones, right? I, I'm not putting Twin Fiend on the board. That would be wiggle room for extra DPS up top, down below, whatever you want to do.
we go. And that is it. So, defender on both lanes, heal on both lanes, DPS to cover each other, and then your extra DPS where you need them, right? I like to put ranged fighters behind the tanks. I especially did it when I was first clearing the content because if, you know, the the enemies did get um if they did stack up and one enemy got through the defender, then there was someone there to stop them at least. So there is phase two Ludwig. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you. If it did, if you liked it, please support the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, join the discord server. Link will be in the description below. Thank you so much for your time. I will see you in the next one.